welcome back to the channel. Uh, Y'all went crazy with the Q&As and there are so many questions. I am gonna try my best to answer all of them, but thank you so much for asking so many. If you're new to the channel, hi there, how's it going? My name is Mari, AKA Atomic Mari, and uh, we're, do we're doing a Q&A and you're probably gonna get to know me a lot more uh, if this is your first um, video here. Let's get to it. First question comes from Aaron RB. What was the main reason we moved to Las Vegas? Now, this was probably the most asked question since it's my fault. I threw up a vlog last week without ever addressing why we decided to move. So I'm addressing this question first and for foremost because it's literally what I should have addressed last week in the moving vlog, but I didn't. I just, uh... So why? There's a few layers here. First layer is space. With quarantine put in place, we are home like everyone else 24 seven and we work from home. Pete and I lived in a roughly 900 square foot two bedroom apartment which is completely doable when we're not home 24 seven. So we looked into other options to relocate. The second layer for why we moved is clear and simple, money. Los Angeles is stupid expensive. It's nearly double the nationwide average. I even have a source. And again, with quarantine, the premium price that we were paying to stay in a city like Los Angeles, kind of like, it went out the window when everything's closed down. And, and I know what you're saying when things go back to normal. I'll get to that. Don't worry. And the last piece of the puzzle and the catalyst of why we ultimately made the move is work. As you may know, earlier this year, I was hired by Quibi to host their gaming show. RIP. Week by week, we measured how quarantine was going because the light at the end of the tunnel was that as soon as things normalized, I'd be back in a live studio set again. So we held out for the pandemic, held out for hope, all until Quibi canned the show and then the final nail in the coffin until Quibi shut down completely. And at the end of the day, I mean, as, as long as our world is the way it is with quarantine and I anticipate that it's gonna be this way for a while longer, I can work from home. It's not like I won't be back in Los Angeles. It's just that until I need to be there, I'll be living comfortably in a big old house that's triple the size for half the rent, okay? Ooh. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get to some random ass questions. John here has a three part question. My favorite food to eat, favorite food to cook, and favorite food to have dumped on in any challenge. I love eating curry, all kinds of curry, uh, Thai, Indian, Japanese. I just, I love me some spice spicy, spicy curry. And I love cooking chili, homemade chili. And then if I had to get food dumped on me, I've had a lot of food dumped on me. I th I'm gonna pick coconut oil because it's lumpy and it's also good for your hair and skin. So coconut oil. Blaine asks, what is my workout routine? Um, It's changed since quarantine because uh, obviously I uh, can't go to classes, which is personally my favorite. Like I love being in group fitness and like group ballet classes and stuff like that. Let's just talk about what my routine is right now. High intensity interval training, AKA HIT. It's efficient, 45 minutes of work. It's minimal rest. And if you don't know what HIT training is, it's basically it's a ton of burpees. I might be like in a uh, Stockholm syndrome sort of situation, but I've done so many burpees through HIT training that I actually really like burpees to the, like to the point where if if there's an exercise that I don't want to do, I'll do burpees instead. It's healthy Stockholm syndrome. I'm just kidding. Stockholm syndrome is never good. Okay, Christina asks if my relationship with Peter changed since we got married. Other than calling each other husband and wife, which feels good, I will say, I would say no. We get better tax breaks and our families have a sense of relief that we're legally bound to one another. But I mean, we were dating for eight years before we got married. So it was, I don't know. At the end of the day, it was a wonderful formal ceremony to solidify what was already there. With that said, I love calling him my husband. So there's that. Okay, uh, oh, the content question. If you wanna make vlogs and gaming videos, the best piece of advice I have for you is just do it. I would say make content with zero expectations. If you could look at your content as a way to capture just like 
a sliver of your life in this moment right now in time rather than making it for views you'll be much better prepared mentally to keep it up so my best advice to you is to just do it and try it and do it because you enjoy it do it Okay, Arnold asks if I'd teach Tyler Japanese. For context, Tyler is my friend Lasercorn's baby boy. This question also applies to Mayet too, but like I could teach them a few words here and there, but to really learn a language, you need to be immersed. Like you need to hear it 24 seven. So if, if, if Lasercorn and Brino wanna hire me as a live-in tutor for a few years, like some bougie, bougie folks, I could teach Tai Tai Japanese then. So, um, but until then, I feel like it'll just be like sprinkled uh, Japanese words here and there. Chat, let me know. What is the first word that I should teach Tai in Japanese? Okay, uh, Ombre says that Joven and I are friendship goals. Can, can you describe it from your lens? Hmm, this is a cool question. I, I really appreciate this question. We have a tremendous amount of respect for each other. And I will be the first person to admit that our content that we make together doesn't always reflect that. But I think we've always seen past who our personas are when we film. We both work damn hard and we're cooking up 10 plates at once. Is that a thing? 10 plates? We have many irons in the fire. Is it? Wait, I don't know my idioms. Anyway. I think we recognize that, that about each other. We're, we're both hustlers and we're, we're, like when we need a little bit of a motivation in our year, when we have doubts about our careers or need an extra pair of eyes on, on what we're working on, we do rely on each other. And, and you know, with that, with that said, like we fight like siblings and at the end of the day, we're honest with which either, which each other, with each other. Wow, I cannot talk. I could see us compared to like Donna and Tom from Parks and Rec, perhaps a Marlin and Dory combo. Um, but I'd say Joven, Sohan, Elsie, and I are probably best represented as the Golden Girls. Did that answer your question? All right, M York uh, asks, what my best tips are for a female who's looking to break into a male dominated industry? I love this question. Let your work speak for itself, girl. People can talk and tear you down, but they can't take away your merits. Also, I always say, show up and don't be an asshole. You gotta put in the work, you gotta show up, you gotta put in the time, your 10,000 hours, be proactive, send out emails, educate yourself. And then, and then the second part of that is, is be easy to work with, be professional, be kind. It will take you so much further than what any business book will give it credit for. So thank you for asking that question though. That gets me all riled up in a good way. Okay, Green Bay asks what I've been doing that isn't seen so much publicly. Paige asks a very similar question. Okay, you're here for some of that extra info, something off the secret menu. I get it, I get it, Um, I see you. One of those things is that for the first time ever, releasing official merch. I've never released my own merch before, so this is like, I'm hella hyped on it. I'm so involved in the process, y'all. Like I'm mocking up designs and pitch decks and mood boards. It just feels really, really good to know that I was super hands-on with crafting the design. So yeah, happening at the beginning of next month, um, as well as my first action short film, Coyote Sunset, finally premiering. Uh, the date is December 7th. And if all goes as planned, it's something I will announce officially on socials today. So if you're watching this on premiere uh, on YouTube, then you're a little bit ahead of the game because I'll, I'll, I'll probably go live with some stuff like in like soon. Okay, Brendan asks, what do you do? For what do I do for a living? What do you do? This is a good question. Working at an establishment, whether it's a ballet company or a media company like Defy is as close to like normal job as you can get when the job really isn't very normal. So to answer your question, uh, I created a production company three years ago called Rebel Adam. Yep, your girl is a CEO. Peter and I run the company and that's been our full-time job since 2017. We're our own bosses. It's it, Rebel Adam is 
is our baby. And it feels incredible. Growing up and even well into my 20s, I never thought I'd start a company or even be on any sort of like entrepreneurial track. So man, life is wild. Lich asks who my favorite Mortal Kombat character is and why. Okay, it's totally basic, but Scorpion. He was my favorite as a kid. I won a tournament in fourth grade, playing cheap as hell as him. Plus he's an undead Japanese ninja, easy. Hillbilly and honestly a bunch of others ask if I miss Joven and the others. I miss them every day, but you know, since I moved to Vegas, I see them as often as I'd see them normally in this pandemic, which is never. So right now it feels like I haven't even moved in that sense. The Golden Girls and I, we, we text <laughs> like every other day um, and we stream on Twitch together. So uh, it feels right now, it feels the same. To answer your question, I always miss my friends, but isn't that all of us during quarantine? Jordan asks for career advice if you're unsure of what you're gonna do. The advice is allow yourself the flexibility to adjust and stay malleable because Oh my God, the landscape of practically every job out there is evolving. So allow yourself to live and learn and make mistakes and experience jobs you hate, honestly, because those jobs will make the jobs that you love that much better if you if you if you follow what I'm saying like without having the jobs that you hate you will never truly appreciate the awesome moments in in the jobs that you love no no job no no education no class no experience no career path is ever in vain it'll it'll always come back in ways you may never anticipate so allow yourself to live your life fluidly and like Bruce Lee says be water my friend dark and Brandy, hi Brandy, uh, asked what I'm looking forward to most about the new location in Vegas. Working closely with the martial arts and stunt crew, Our Hat Orphan Brotherhood. Also working with and producing more films with Isma Hawk as a collaboration with Rebel Adam. And then lastly, hiking in the mountains because oh my God, there's mountains. I've never lived in a place like this and experiencing seasons for the first time. There's literally snow on the mountaintops like right now when I look outside. It's wild. Oh, and also the stars. Oh my gosh, the lack of traffic. There's a lot to be excited about. Also, the food here is really, really good. <laughs> Last of all, the elephant in the room. The Smosh question. I, I'd be lying if I said that I haven't been like dodging these questions for the past like July, August, September, October, no, like five months now. And as you can imagine, like it's harder and harder to dodge the questions when I'm live streaming so often. And and thanks to my mod team who have had to like divert questions for so long. Um, so I think it just makes sense to finally clear the air. So let me add the uh, obligatory camera adjust and the, uh, the it's about to get serious sigh. <sighs> Just kidding. Um, no, it'll be lighthearted. I'm not too sure where I should start, but the questions that I get often are, do I miss it and do I want to go back? I miss Smosh games every day. Making content with the crew was undeniably and easily some of the best years. Like our, our chemistry was just like off the charts. Like it felt like magic from day one. And like to our surprise too. And and I think oftentimes, at least for me personally, like I took it for granted thinking all teams worked like this. But looking back, it is like lightning in a in a bottle. That friendship, that recipe, that weird motley crew of friends, like it can't be replicated. It can't be copy and pasted. It it it's hard to cast, but it was it was something truly special. And and I think it's, it's one of the reasons why I felt like I wanted to stay forever. I, I wanted to stay. I think we all did, but in some ways I wanted to almost stay in a time capsule. It was really hard for me to not constantly look back to those times. We loved working with each other and, and yeah, like I, I think I would have, I would have been there forever. Um, and it's true that I have many other dreams and passions I want to pursue. And, and for many years, I did pursue them in conjunction with working at Smosh. Um, yeah, 
it, it was never it was never in in the cards or my intention to leave Smosh behind. But in the end, they made it hard for me to stay. So let's get into what happened and when. At the end of February, I was filming um, per usually per usual um, like a like a whole block of shoots, and in between shoots, I I, I pitched uh, that I wanted to bring the OG SG folks together for a long form podcast type of show on my personal channel. Um, it was to be non-competitive content to former or present content on the SG channel. So there theoretically shouldn't, as I thought, be any problems. Um, I also pitched that we would off the bat call ourselves something else, in this case, any six. Um, so there wouldn't be any like old SG versus new SG discussions from fans because you know, it, it didn't really help anyone to drum up like the past. Um, it was a way, at least I thought, for us to be able to coexist. Um, besides, at the end of the day, like how is how is content getting 50,000 views going to put a dent in the behemoth that Smosh is? Um, it wouldn't. Um, and I had hoped I, I could do both, um, continue working with Smosh and, and NE6. But unfortunately, those, those feelings weren't shared um, with the executive team. And ultimately, I was given an ultimatum of staying with Smosh and not uploading uh, NE6 content or packing my theoretical desk if I moved forward. Um, I didn't intend that day on set to be my last. To be fair, none of us did. Um, so my departure was super unceremonious. I, I unintentionally Irish exited. And if, if anything, I feel most sorry to the cast and crew that I didn't properly say goodbye. I think the the pitiful, victimizing, self-destructive side of me felt like I didn't deserve a goodbye. I also didn't want any of them to feel caught in the crossfire of any like tension between me and the execs because it immediately felt like an excommunication. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, these are just excuses. Um, I could have reached out and said bye, and I, I failed to do that. Um, I don't have a good segue. I mean, I guess a lot of people feel this way when they no longer work in a place. Um, I Googled it, and it's apparently a very Japanese thing, too. Um, like when particularly Japanese salary men retire from their jobs, they've worked at for, what, like 30, 30 or 40 or 50, 50 years? What's the retiring? 65 is the retiring. Rate. Anyway, um, they suddenly feel like like a wandering Ronin samurai. Like there's a there's a loss of identity almost. And and for a bit, I like I felt that. Um, I don't know. At the time, the at the time it happened, the selfish, self centered part of me wished that the last decade meant more. Maybe I wanted a party. Or a card, a tweet. Is that stupid? <laughs> it sounds stupid when I say it out loud. When things happened, there was sadness for for a while, and then there was anger, and you know. But like a lot of us, especially this year, I think we all learned to pull ourselves together, and I did, and I am, and and now now I'm here, and I'm I'm happy, and I'm calm, and and I'm moving forward. In some ways, it might have been the breakup that I needed. And, you know, I, I have to reiterate, though, that I bled Smosh for nearly 10 years. And I think it's really important for me to hammer in how grateful I am for my time there. Like, I'll, I'll, like I'll always be, in some ways, Mari from Smosh. And, and I'll always wear it as a badge of honor because, my God... We made some awesome content. We made some good shows. We had really good times and, and we brought so many folks together and they continue to do, you know? I, I'm, I'm sitting here making content because of Smosh and, and also because of you, the fan base. Um, so in that, I'll, I'll, I'll never not be grateful. It's, it's important, you know, that this 
isn't tea, it's not clickbait. If it was, I, I wouldn't have buried it in the middle of a Q&A video. Um, so yeah, when all's said and done, I'm grateful for the past and present. I, I wish my alma mater and the, the cast and crew well. And and when one of y'all write in chat if I miss it, the answer will always be that I will always keep those memories with my friends near and dear to my heart. So yeah, I don't know if that answered all the questions, but I think I will leave it at that. Thank you for asking so many good questions. Many were left unanswered. So so yeah, um, before I let you go, let's let's do a lightning round though, just for funsies. AOT, I know it's basic, but nothing gets me more hype. Cucumbers, I, lo I love cucumbers. 80s synthwave workout mix. Look it up on YouTube. It should have a shirtless Arnold Schwarzenegger on it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mari and I will see you next week for some more show. Does that even make sense? Whatever. Matadai